This is AQA Coordinated Science Chemistry Higher Paper 2 from June 2018. And this is question one. So we've got here fractional fractionating uh, column, fractional distillation. And we've got a very simple question at the bottom, actually, just a missing word. So crude oil vapor passes up the column and then each fraction will do what at a different level? Well, distillation is easier to think of as a evaporation followed by a condensation. Very, very occasionally you'll see something condensed then evaporated if you have a question about fractional distillation of liquefied air, for example. But we are looking at recondensing our different fractions so they can be taken off separately. On to 1.2, why the fractions separate. Now, what's important to note here is that each of these four different properties are true. The fractions do have different boiling points, melting points, flammability and viscosity. But it's the boiling points that will determine where they will condense in the fractionating column, with shorter chains condensing higher up because they have lower boiling points. We then move on to 1.3 and we've got an alkane built out of molymods. So to name the alkane, first of all, you need to count the carbons and there are one, two, three of them. Hydrogen's coming off. Because there are three, that means the name is based on prop. Because it's an alkane, it ends in ane. And just so you can be clear, there are easy ways to remember the names of the different alkanes. You only actually need to learn the first four, methane, ethane, propane, and butane. There's actually a mnemonic here that can help though, which takes you all the way up to six. My easy process best provides help, meth, eth, prop, bute, pent, hex. On to 1.4, methane is an alkane. What's the general formula for alkanes? Well, I've written out the formula of two more alkanes here, propane and butane. And let's take a look at what happens if we make the number of carbons N. Well, to get from three to eight, I double it and add two. To get from four to 10, I double it and add two. To get from one to four, as I see in the original methane, I double N and add two. So the correct formula is CN H2N plus two. Onto 1.5 and we've got balancing the equation here. Now, when you are balancing uh, the combustion of hydrocarbon, I always follow the rule of Cho. You balance the carbon, then the hydrogen, then the oxygen. Carbons are already balanced here. So I've got CH4, I need two H2Os to get the same number of hydrogens on either side. And then I've now got four oxygens on the right hand side, so I need two O2 to balance that. Ethene is an alkene. Which reagent do we use as the test for alkenes? Straightforward factual recall here, it's bromine water. And the observation you would make is that alkenes will decolorize brown bromine water. Moving on to 1.7, uh, we've got a lot of information here that we're going to come back to for 1.8, but we're starting with why we do life cycle assessments. And it's a very straightforward answer. We do it to assess the environmental impact. We are looking at the resources that are used to make it, the energy used to make it. We're looking at where it goes when it's finished with, does it go into landfill? All of those our environmental impact. Moving on to 1.8, where you are asked to compare two methods for the disposal of biodegradable plastic bags. It's a four mark question, but it follows a very similar format to the six markers that you will be familiar with. To get to level two, three or four, you need scientifically relevant features identified. You need to talk about similarities and differences. It needs to be made clear and the magnitude of the similarity or difference is noted. To get level one, you need some relevant features and some differences noted. So let's take a look at what we can do with the information. Well, if I look at column one, I can see that burning 10,000 bags would produce 10 kilograms more landfill. 
So I'm getting an idea of scale there. Putting 10,000 bags in landfill does produce 0.02 kilograms more solid residue than burning. And putting them in landfill produces 50% more sulfur dioxide than burning. So we've got some good comparisons there and you can see I've taken that data direct from the table. Now to get the level two we need the comparisons. So we're looking for things like landfill produces more solid residue but less carbon dioxide than burning and that will take you up to the next level.